England knockout Slovakia in a game that ended to one. But I tell you what, it was really a navy ending. Sorry, it wasn't even a navy ending. The entire game was very navy for the side of England because Slovakia came up and obviously put in what we call the first goal in the 25th minute. And it was scored by Ivan Skr Skrens. And when that game, when the goal came in through, England struggled and struggled and struggled. But when you look at that first goal, it shows you how much they're missing Harry Maguire because of his aerial prowess in there for you. Mark Gehi, <clears throat> good as he is, but looks like he really went ahead, obviously, misread the or miscalculate the flight of the ball and he failed to obviously win that head. And the moment the opponent won it, it fell into the vicinity of a Slovakia player and he passed it to Ivan Skrens and it really went in the back of the net. Welcome to the... Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? And who are you watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, comment, and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss that on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rokan David is my name. And obviously, this has been the third match of the round of 16, meaning that we are having five to go and we'll be knowing who is facing who in the. We'll, we'll be knowing who is facing who after. The game of Spain is, is also done in the mix because the winner between Spain and Georgia goes ahead to play a team known as Germany who are really the hosts. So we thank God for the gift of life. How many likes? 100 likes plus on this video. And let's get into this game of football. <clears throat> England, shockingly, just went down by one goal to nil and they never even had a shot on target. And the stats are really going to show exactly how bad England looked on the day. And it really, it really required the manager to take off, um, to take off Kylian Trippier, to take Bukayo Saka onto the left to play as the left back. Then Carl Palmer came in through to play as a right attack midfielder. Kobe Maini was taken off. Trent Alexander Arnold was dropped on. Then Ebelechi Ezi, right? After that, he also went ahead to get off. Uh, was it Phil Foden and brought on Ivan Tony into the mix and it went ahead obviously pay out well for him and however much I don't like Gary Southgate and I'm gonna slate him in the video but I would love to give him credit for being brave to go in for those substitutions because if he never went in for those substitutions maybe he wouldn't have gone ahead to go through because it really looked like it was over. England had no way of obviously scoring a goal. But my fault is, what where I'm faulting him is, why do you have to take all that long to really go in for that game? You know, if I was him, the first thing for me to do, I wouldn't even first take off a uh, clear trip here to get him to play as a left back. No, I would have gone ahead, obviously, gate Kobe Maini off, you know, and obviously leave Declan Rice to play in a single pivot. Then, you drop Phil Foden and Judy Bellingham to play in the midfield three alongside Declan Rice. Then you drop on Ivan Tony, another striker. You understand? They needed two strikers to obviously come up and obviously bully all those people around. And that bullying obviously went ahead, obviously result into the second goal, just 51 seconds into the start of the first half of the extra time, where Harry Kane came up and obviously scored a goal and the assist was all going to Ivan Tony. But that came before, before that. To really go to the extra time, England needed that equalizer, that volley coming in through from Judy Bellingham in the 90th plus 50th minute because they were left with just one. Hear me out. They were left with just one minute for the referee to blow the whistle and England to be knocked out. But he came up and really put in a very beautiful shift that is Judy Bellingham and put in the effort and it went the back of the net. So I would love to give him credit onto that, but there is something that he doesn't really deserve credit for. He has failed to assemble a team that can really get England results. That is the most worrying bit of it all. Because if you're playing Slovakia and you are having all those players on the field of play, how do you fail to get a shot on target in 90 minutes? Because the first goal that Julie Bellingham scores was the first shot on target for England, registered in that game. And the second, sh and the second goal was England is... Um, was England's um, second shot on target in that game, you know? And the stats are really going to show you exactly how England looked and how poor they looked that entire game. However much they've gone ahead to go through, but they really looked ugly. England had 16 shots at goal. Slovakia had 13. 
then two shots on target for England, three shots on target for Slovakia. 64% ball possession by England, 36% ball possession by Slovakia, 808 passes completed by England, 471 passes completed by Slovakia, 87% passing accuracy by England, 80% passing accuracy by Slovakia, 12 fouls by England, 19 by Slovakia, 3 yellow cards issued to England and 5 yellow cards issued to the side of Slovakia and no red cards were issued, then 1 offside to England, 2 offsides to Slovakia, nine corners to England and one uh, corner to the side of Slovakia. So when you look at those stats, it shows you that England had a lion's share of the possession, but they were not threatening. That is the worst bit of it all because you can really play that kind of game of football. A team can pack a bus, but what do you offer? What do you offer when you really have that lion possession? You know, create chances and let them not cross the line. Everyone will be like, Gary Southgate has gone ahead obviously put in a very huge performance and he's really putting in a very huge uh, exhibition in there for you. Tactics, right, everything right. But I think he got many things wrong. But <clears throat> taking the risk because he needed to do it. The moment he couldn't take that risk, I tell you, he would have gone ahead to be sucked by tomorrow. <clears throat> if England never went, never, never went ahead to go through, to the round of eight, Gary Southgate would have gone here to be sacked, you know? And I've always told you that he's not the right man for the job. If you're having a right manager who knows exactly what to do, trust me that England team can play better football and create better chances. But right now, they're living on moments. They're living on moments. It's moments football team, all national team. That is it, you know? You'll need the, brill the individual brilliancy of Judy Bellingham. You'll need the individual brilliancy of Ivan Tony to connect with Harry Kane to get in that goal. And one will tell me, Rokani, that's what France has gone ahead to be living on. But France creates genuine chances. Now, <clears throat> they've gone ahead to go through. Judy Bellingham has come out and obviously scored a second goal in this tournament. Very beautiful goal. And Harry Kane has also gone ahead to score a second goal in this tournament. I think the 65th, 65th goal in his England career, national team career. But they are going to be facing Switzerland. If you watched how Switzerland skipped past Italy to knock them out, you worry a little bit for England, right? And by the way, with effect from those games in the quarterfinals, I'm going to be doing much previews about those games because we've gone ahead to obviously reach an extent where men have been separated from the boys. You know, men have been separated from the boys because when you look at England, they had big players and big players create what we call big moments. Judy Bellingham is a big player and he creates big moments. The same applies to Harry Kane. He has gone ahead to create a big moment. But the big question remains, right? The big question remains as, hear me out, the big question remains as, don't other teams they're really playing have big players? Xhaka, Noye, you can talk about Mbolo, and very many other players that really make up the team of Switzerland. They're really good players, and they can really produce huge moments. Now, will England survive? If they're playing Switzerland, will they survive? You know, it's really going to be a hard one. But to flip the coin on the other side, you should come out and obviously <clears throat> not to eat that. Some teams that go ahead to win tournaments like these don't need to play like that. You get? They don't need to play like that. They just have to play better and play good. Sorry, they just they don't need to play better, but they capitalize onto their moments. And in the new course of them capitalizing onto their moments, they obviously find themselves winning lots and lots and lots of games. That's what these teams really do, and that's what makes them special into the mix. So for me. I've not liked the way England has gone ahead to play, but I've liked it because they've gone ahead to go through. Remember, I talked about four teams that are my favorites. Top favorite, France. Second favorite, England. Third favorite, Germany. Fourth favorite is Portugal. But when you look at how France is playing and England, my top two favorites, it's really worrying. But don't be surprised if one of those teams reach the final. You understand? So, guys, thank you very much for watching through. My man of the match is Declan Rice. I think has gone ahead to do a lot, shielding that back for 
connecting them interview to the attack he really looked great into that beautiful game of football and for me is my man of the match so guys your reactions to england to slovakia one are welcome in the comment section below and who is your man of the match my man of the match is declan rice who is yours